My guest today is Carden Calder, co-founder of Blue Chip Communications. Carden helps organizations strategically manage their reputation. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Tell us a little bit about how the company came about. Sure. We started in 2004 and it was very much because I couldn't find what I needed when I was working inside large corporates. I had worked with fa some fantastic consultants who could advise me on communication and who could help us roll out communication campaigns, but I couldn't find people who knew both our business and who knew how to be good communication people. And so with a lot of financial services expertise, my partner and I decided that there was a space, and it turned out there was a space, fortunately for us, for a business that knew both the industry sector we were in and who were also good communication people able to help others in their businesses get the message out. Great, thank you. Now one of the things you do um, is help people manage their reputation. Mm -hmm. Why is reputation management an important aspect of business for all of us to consider? I think the authority in some ways on reputation management is Warren Buffett who said it takes 20 years to build a good reputation and about five minutes to ruin it. <laughs> and, and his second comment was if you think about that, you will do things differently. And we absolutely agree with that. You know, it's critical that your business has a great reputation if you're going to succeed in any aspect. It might be about um, attracting great employees, it might be about obviously keeping your clients or growing your client base, it might be about commercial partnerships. You know, we've had clients come to us and say, you know, we're really good at getting the revenue in through the door, but what we're not getting is our fair share of the commercial opportunities. And so we want to build our reputation in order to have other deals come to us. So essentially what reputation gets you is the support that you need from the people who matter most to business. And your expert in this area. So tell us some of the elements of mm. good management of reputation. Mm. You know, a lot of it sounds quite common sense, and in fact it is, but it's that old notion of, you know, uncommon common sense. What we know from global studies about reputation is that there are a few key things that drive reputation more than anything else. And there's kind of no news flash in some of this. One of the things that drives reputation is what you do. You know, does your business do what it says on the tin? Are you living up to the promise that you make when customers come to you, when employees come to you? So what you say about yourself is actually really important because if you can't live up to it, immediately you're creating a problem for yourself and you're going to lose support rather than gain it. Mm. So we know that the workplace is a really important determinant of reputation. Ahead of the workplace even, what you do, how well you deliver your products and services is the primary determinant. And then other aspects have been very interesting to see emerge as well, things like governance and corporate social responsibility also determine reputation. So if we're active in those areas mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. make that public, I guess. Exactly, and so there are, going beyond the sort of the seven sort of headline aspects of reputation, if you dig down to the next level, there are a few very specific things that you can do to make sure that you're managing your reputation the best way. And under corporate social responsibility, it might be, does your business make the world a better place? Right. Are you supporting good causes? Under governance, it might be, does your business behave ethically? Um, are you, do you stand behind the products and services that you sell? If something goes wrong, how do you handle it? That's actually one of those examples right. when reputation is made or broken. If something goes wrong in your business or with your products and services and you handle it well, your reputation goes up. If something goes wrong and you handle it badly, it can be cataclysmic for reputation. Mm. And we'll come back to that five minutes that Warren Buffett mentioned a little later because I think reputation management has changed uh, lately and you'll be able to tell us about that. Other elements? Yes, so leadership mm -hmm. is one. Leadership and innovation are two that are quite important. So they're two of the others that have a slightly lower impact, in fact, on reputation overall. And yet, as a business owner or as a leader in a, in a large business, if you're thinking about what you can do to dial up the reputation of the business in particular areas that matter most to the people who matter most to the business, then you can actually selectively choose, for example, to build the profile of the leader of the business because you know that if you build the profile of the leader of the business and that person is a credible business person, they're seen to have perhaps good ideas, good leadership skills to be doing the right thing by clients, then you also build the, the overall reputation of the business at the same time. Innovation is pretty self-explanatory. Are you doing something differently? Are you breaking new ground? Are you doing something perhaps in an established sector but doing it better than others are? So actually overtly talking about what you're doing in terms of innovation or in terms of leadership or in terms of your employees, all of those things actually help build your reputation and create a picture of a company, whether it's a very small business or whether it's a very large business that's doing things right across all seven dimensions of reputation. 
there's a lot in that. Yes, there is. You know, it's you, huge you said there's no mm. newsflash, but there's quite a strategy in there for a yep, business to absolutely. take care of all those areas. Mm. Um, citizenship. Yes. Talk to us about that. Yeah. Well. Are you making the world a better place? You know, there's a really simple, there are about two or three things that come under the category of citizenship. And one of them is, is what you're doing good for the world? Are you behaving ethically? And it's interesting, I think one of the challenges for business owners and for leaders sometimes is to know how their actions and how their company's actions will be seen by the outside world. And so there's a place there for actually thinking or seeking outside feedback about what you're doing because you might be doing something that you think is behaving in a very ethical way but somehow that message doesn't get out and you can end up being you know absolutely pilloried in media for things that you did with the best of intentions mm. but where either the communication hasn't been right about it you haven't managed to get the message out the right way or where in fact community standards are different to what you thought was doing the right thing inside your business what if I'm a small business? Mm. Do the same rules apply? Absolutely. I guess the big challenge in a small business, like the one that I run, is that you've got limited resources yes. to talk about all of those seven dimensions of reputation. So as with any business, you have to be quite selective. And one way to be selective is to think, what are the things that matter most to the people who matter most to me? And if you're a small business and you're aiming to grow, for example, very rapidly, let's say you're on that crazy growth curve, <coughs> excuse me, Let's say you're on that crazy growth curve of startup where you might be growing 100% or 50% or 25% year on year. At that point, your reputation that sits behind your products and services is probably actually one of the most important levers you've got to deal with. It's also one of the risky. You know, in order to stay on a growth curve like that, you need customers to keep coming to you yes. or to do a lot of repeat business. But chances are you're looking for a lot of new clients or new customers at that point. And so the aspect of reputation that you're probably going to be pushing is the one that's going to bring those people to you. Chances are that's all about what you do. So is the service or the product that you're making or delivering, are you getting the message out well enough about that in a way that you're hitting the right buttons in the audience? So they think, yep, you're absolutely what I need. So the piece of work that any business owner can do, which is really thinking through from their audience's point of view, and let's say in that example, it's their client's point of view, what is it about my business that matters most to those people? I want to talk about social media only because I think that's mm. one way that a reputation can be destroyed in minutes. Mm. How has the advent of social media mm. changed the way that we manage our reputation? Fundamentally mm -hmm. is the short answer and the interesting thing about social media is that it is instant and we have many great case studies of reputation disasters and I'm sure you know some of them, I'm not going to name them, where people haven't handled the social media aspect of their communication at all well and there are some really simple guidelines that people can follow. One is watch what is being said about your business in the blogosphere, what is being said about your business online. If you don't know that, you're leaving a huge part of your reputation completely unmanaged and I would argue running a huge risk in your business. So one is listen in social media, obviously quite important. And the other then really, as you get into it in a really simple level, is start to engage selectively. So do you know what's being said about you and how would you like to interact in that realm? And are you interacting in a way that the people who are already there will find appropriate? But social media is both risk and opportunity for business owners. One, the risk is that your reputation can be ruined in seconds almost or in minutes. You know, if, if something happens in your business and people are tweeting that, then it's live and you've lost control right. of the communication agenda instantly. But on the other hand, as you know, social media is a whole other platform through which you can build a brand, attract followers and actually show the story behind your brand and behind your business and tell all of the great things mm. that you're doing and interact in a way that shows actually more than just tells. It actually shows what a great business you are. Mm. And I think that I would argue with Warren Buffett on this one point, not much that I would argue anything about, and that is perhaps a reputation can be built faster now because of the, yes. the ability yeah, that we have through right. technology. Absolutely right. And brands such as Amazon, for example, that Australians now regard as being a part of their life, they would never have heard of a few right. years ago. And how did that happen? It happened through the power of the web. So there are brands now that have become global, for example, where once upon a time they were bricks and mortar stores. They're now clicks and mortar stores right. where, where people can go and interact with that brand on a daily basis sometimes. News media is another great example of that. Just um, before we go, uh, you're a mum, you're a business owner, you're a woman. <laughs> what advice would you give those watching perhaps on what's worked for you? Mm. 
I had some great advice once from a mentor who remains a dear friend to this day and she said to me one day when I was struggling, as I do often as a mother of three with my own business, she said, outsource everything you absolutely can. And so I have followed that advice to the letter. Anything that I can outsource to somebody else at home, I do. And then I think the other thing that's also a little bit about that, that woman and several other people in my life who have been very influential is to have great mentors and support around me, whether it's from peers who are business owners and I get that peer support through um, Entrepreneurs Organisation which I'm a member of in Sydney and also I get that support from mentors and advisors who are older and wiser than I am, who've been there and done it and who can see my situation from a completely different perspective and give me an objective view that I probably can't always maintain in my day-to-day -day life. Great, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you.